Okay, y'all, I'm going to need you to stop with the spiro madness. So I specialize in transgender hormone therapy. I know a thing or two, I really get into it, but it makes me really sad whenever people contact me and relentlessly pursue being on spironolactone for testosterone blockade when it isn't even necessary. The way that the body works naturally to suppress testosterone whenever you're on high dose estradiol therapy is wonderful and much more useful and safe. So essentially the negative feedback mechanisms that you receive through the hypothalamus and pituitary gland, uh, they prevent those same structures from sending the signal down to the gonads to produce testosterone in the first place, thereby naturally lowering your levels. And so then you don't even need spironolactone. All you need is high dose estrogen therapy. Now, because traditional trans medicine was set up decades ago with old research and everything and everyone was very scared of estradiol, uh, people were prescribed only baby doses, very low doses of estrogen uh, because of this. And therefore, then they did need a testosterone blocker. But nowadays, we practice differently with high-dose estrogen therapy. So those who know what they're doing, don't do that anymore. So spironolactone originally is meant to be more of a blood pressure managing medication. And the way that it works is that it wastes sodium from the body and water follows the sodium, which thereby lowers your blood pressure. So you're kind of wasting some of your fluid and wasting some of your electrolytes. And on low doses, like what they prescribe for blood pressure management, such as 25 and 50 milligrams daily, that's okay. But for transgender people, they're prescribing 100, 200, 300, and 400 milligrams a day. So you can kind of imagine the difference in fluid and electrolyte volumes that you get when you go from the blood pressure 25, 50 milligram a day to 100 to 400 milligrams a day. That's insane. And now you're giving a medication that makes people pee even more to a patient population that already has trouble finding a safe bathroom to use. That just seems like a bad idea. So uh, anyways, Another point is that spiro in and of itself, like wasting all that water and uh, electrolytes and things can cause such things as muscle cramps, headaches, fatigue, dizziness, stuff like that. And if people walk around feeling like crap, taking this medicine they don't even need when they could just have high dose estrogen therapy and suppress their testosterone production on their own. I've had patients write to me that have a testosterone level of 10 and ask why they can't be on spironolactone. Why would you need to be on spiro? <laughs> Your T's already suppressed. Stop the spiro madness. It isn't necessary. You don't need it to control testosterone. There's very rare cases in which you do need it. Um, and it's a great blood pressure medicine, I suppose, if you need that type, but um, you do not need it for testosterone suppression. Please, <laughs> please don't do that. Stop the madness of your healthcare provider please do your research, stop prescribing this medicine the way that it's getting prescribed. And if you're a patient, I'm so sorry that this misinformation and this old medicine is still out there, but know that there are much better and safer options.